Hey, everybody. How are you? It's Monday. It's our uh, Monday get together. I'm waiting to see if we get here. Yeah, we're live on Facebook. Okay. Here we are. We're live on Facebook. We're alive with a lot of people are waiting. God, it's like a gangbang here. Hold on a second. Let me uh, start uh, bringing all you people in here. Here we are. We got uh, Marjorie. We got Charlie Wallace. We got Jeff Stein. Uh, uh, let's see here. We got uh, uh, Mike Chisholm. We've got uh, Edward Berger. That's right. That's right. <laughs> And Len Frisco <laughs> and Charlie Wallace and Jeff Stein and Andrew Deutsch and Francine Witt. They were, they're all popping in here. Uh, let me see here. And uh, John Ewing. Oh, boy. Uh, we just signed on in there. 12 people. <laughs> 11, is it? What is it? Well, anyway. Hello, everybody. How are you? Hey. Good. Almost thought I wasn't going to get on today because uh, one of our other shows, with Damien, uh, was doing a show using my zoom and i forgot that he he told me he was going to do it around noon but he'd be off in time for my show but he didn't say so and when i went on to sign on here there he was doing his show so uh i was really worried we wouldn't be able to get on but we finally got on what is wrong with your eye today jeff huh? a little cataract cataract uh, oh did you have the surgery yeah. Oh, oh, I should have noticed you've got the cup. Yeah. Right. Yeah, you've got the you cup on your seen, face. You should have me... seen the other guy. Huh? I had the <laughs> surgery this morning. You had the surgery yeah. this morning? Yeah. Pretty simple. It... Pretty simple, though, isn't it? Really is. It is very simple. Really. I mean, I everybody figured... I know is going to get it goes, oh, I'm, oh, I'm so worried about it. They're going to slice into my eye and blah, blah, blah. <laughs> and I go, don't worry about it. Now, for anybody who has to ever have cataracts, look at Jeff right now. That's right. It's beautiful. <laughs> and the only reason he's got that plastic cap over his eye is because mm -hmm. it, if he sleeps on his face, they don't want him ruining the work. So they put that there. And then you go back tomorrow, right? And they take yep. that off and they check it out and they send you home. and tell Send you, you home. They tell you to come back, I think, in a week just to make sure. And then that's it, you know. Yeah. Yeah. And then if you can do the other eye too, we're not sure. We, you know, the guy said you may not need this. Marjorie will tell you the term they the use one. to make sure they have to do the other eye. What's it's the term? Not, it's, 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 not it's not right yet. <laughs> well, that's, I've heard of it. Too. Francine looks like she's had it. Oh, I was I was actually born with cataracts. You were born with cataracts? Yeah, con it was congenital car cataracts. My father had them too. And I had them removed when I was um, 12. And the first time I had the operation, um, it they were it wasn't ripe, you know, so they grew back. And I was only like I was only 12, and this was like, you know, in the 60s. Yeah. So um, wow. you know, I, and I had to stay in the hospital and it's it a whole thing. So like well, now well, when you did it, it wasn't as simple as it is now. No, it was a whole thing. It was a whole did operation. You have to like I sleep on like bags and stuff, uh, to make sure you didn't, you know. No, not really. I mean, I was, you know. <laughs> It was kind of a weird thing being in the hospital because they didn't know I was 12 and they didn't know whether to put me in the children's ward or the grown-ups ward. Here. So it was, it was kind of weird. Who you gets know? the best food? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it was a weird kind of situation. But then I, then I had it again at 14 and it was, it worked. And I just remember putting my, I had these glasses that didn't do anything because I had cataracts, you know, I put the glasses on and it's like, wow. <laughs> So it was, you know, so yeah, you know, it's um quite a different thing nowadays. Yeah, no, it's, you know, it's, it's like very, like, it's very simple. Like, like, yeah. so I'm going to have it this morning and be here, you know. Yeah. I'm very happy. Yeah. Well, you're having it late in life there, uh, Jeff. Yeah. Uh -huh. Although, when did I have mine, Marjorie? I guess maybe I was around Jeff's age, right? Yeah, I mean, you had yours after me. I had mine before you. Yeah, yeah, because you sent me oh. your doctor. Yeah, was done yeah. more more of these than anybody in New York, right? Yeah, he, he just, perfected it. He perfected it. He was like the king of of cataract surgery. Of cataracts. 
But it's interesting that Francine had it at 12 because usually this is an older kind of procedure. Yeah. yeah. You know? It was just was unusual. 66. What were you saying? What were you saying, Charlie? I said I was 66 when I had my cataract surgery. When you had it, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And how about you, Paula? I had mine done in January. Was I? We should call this the cataract oh. club. Yeah. Oh, okay. <clears throat> That was because I had a I had a uh, renew my driver's license and I didn't want to uh, flunk it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you'd have a hard time with the eye test because where what was it a little? Well, I needed I, after I had the surgery. I, then I I had um uh, um I had uh, glasses that 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 corrected whatever wasn't corrected. So, uh, but it was all done at once. Yeah, very good. You did both eyes at once. And uh, no, it was um one eye a week, a week between. Uh, uh, it was one eye, and then a week later, the other eye. Wow, that fast! Mm -hmm. I know uh, they never do the two at the same time. I, uh, I guess. The, the, the procedure itself is like ten minutes. Yeah, yeah. I think the only reason they do uh, the uh, the procedures a week apart is because they don't want to have to put two of those things on your eyes. That's right. You have to pass your eye. Yeah. 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 <clears throat> Interesting. Interesting. Fast. Uh, the there's a recovery period, which is you know, like a, it's the it, it yes. receipt ten minutes, but there is some time afterwards that that you have to adjust. Yeah, but and then you have to put drops in your eyes for about a yeah. week. That's the worst. Ah, oh. that's for a month. Month is a month. I can't remember now. I had mine done such a long time ago that I can't remember now. Um, but. Uh, you know, it, it, it was it was a sim very simple, the simplest operation I've had to have. Yeah. You know, outside of those that they put you out completely for, and then you know, those have no no real problem. I tell you, I tell you something about reaching a certain age, and that is that that uh, uh, the good thing about hanging out with people who are also a certain age is that whatever you get done, they say, "Oh yeah, I had that." no big deal no big yeah, deal right, don't right, worry yeah. about it you right. know, yeah oh, i yeah. i often thought of myself as a sacagawea of aging you know <laughs> in that i'm like with the lewis and clark uh uh, uh, uh tree, troop going across the country expedition going across the country and i'm i'm looking out ahead saying over there that's where we go now and and i now can do that with people you know mm. Oh, Scott Boddicker's calling. You know, this may be the most people we've ever wow. had. Getting close to it. If if we have one or two more people call, although I don't know who's left. Um, uh, we're uh, Maria Boddicker. Well, it's Scott Boddicker. changing. <laughs> Hold on a second. Are you there, Maria? <laughs> <laughs> a girl called Maria. Uh, yeah, yeah. Anyway, so uh, how, how's everybody's week been? Mm. Anybody, do, anybody do any? Uh, oh, really good for you, right, Mike Chisholm? He went thumbs up, so that uh, meant really good. Yeah, I just came back from LA. I was in LA all week last week. What were you doing in LA? Uh, Letterman stuff. <laughs> Lots of Letterman stuff. I uh, oh. I watched Dave. I went and saw Dave a couple of nights. Um, hung out with a bunch of his former writers and producers, and um, I went and saw the season premiere of Frasier. Uh, be taped and I got to sit in the back pocket of the EP because he's a former Letterman writer. Yeah. Um, and so watched the whole show that happened. That was, that was, that was really cool. Yeah. Um, yeah. Lots of good stuff. They did that, uh, that thing in uh, LA, which was the uh, Netflix is not a joke. Netflix uh, is a joke comedy festival. Yeah. Yes. And then they did some shows with uh, what's his name? Mulaney. John Mulaney. John Mulaney. They're sitting on the PR. I haven't had a chance yeah. to watch it. Yet. They are terrible. I've oh. heard. I heard they were very awkward. Ghastly. Ghastly. Did you watch Dave's? No. No, I, I decided after I saw a couple of his, uh, those I just wasn't going to watch anymore. Apparently Dave's, who Dave was on the last one, and apparently that one there uh, was the best of the bunch. But I haven't watched them yet. Yeah, but I mean, I never saw something suck so much as those shows. <laughs> yeah. And they weren't good either. Huh? And they weren't <laughs> good either. Yeah. Uh, as a matter of fact, um, um, not only did they suck, uh, uh, hello to, by the way, hello to uh, Chris Cat. Hey, hello, Chris. Chris Cat. Hello, Alex. Nice to see you as always. Joined us last week. 
uh what i was going to say is that it was just it was i i tuned it in thinking hey it's going to be okay you know and it wasn't and then i watched the tom brady um uh, uh, roast roast and it was terrible mainly because they only had a couple of comic comics doing it and the rest were like uh you know football people who really quite frankly don't have the timing to do comedy and it was it was horrible but i did watch nikki glazer on that thing and then i went and watched her uh her show her her stand-up show he's really very good yeah nikki's amazing huh nikki's amazing he nikki no i thought you said he is amazing no <laughs> no she is amazing yeah, but she was the only good thing on the Tom Brady Rose. The rest of it was just, again, ghastly. Um, and it seems as though they got such big ratings, Netflix is happy and is going to do more roasts. <laughs> I, I I hope they do it better. In a bit, you know, it, really it was just, it was ghastly, horrible. Um, anyway, anyone anyone else do anything interesting at all? Yeah. Well, what really? Hey, what I did? Oh, uh, you got it. Well, I know you got a cataract surgery. Uh, but the guys our right. age, that's exciting. Over the weekend, yeah, we went up to uh, the Bronx, where they have the fantastic um, flowers and, and gardens. Mm. Oh, you yeah. go up there? No. Fantastic. So New York botanical gardens. No, yeah. that's that's in Brooklyn. In Brooklyn. No, it's in Bronx. Well, the botanical gardens are in Brooklyn. Yeah, I think there's two. Is that the orchid show? There's two. There's one right by... There's one, in, the there's one, in, one in the Bronx and one in Brooklyn. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. Here we go. When I was a kid, I may have been to the Bronx Botanical Gardens. Fantastic. Because my grandparents, I believe, lived in the Bronx. And we stayed up there. This is I'm a kid, so I can't remember any of that stuff now, you know. But uh, anyway, um, let's see here. Marjorie and I, you know what we did for excitement? <laughs> uh, on Friday, we went to Scarsdale. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> say no more, say no more. Hey, say can no anybody more. here guess why we went to Scarsdale? Yeah. Was it a funeral? Nope. All right, I got nothing. Doctor's <laughs> department. Okay, our dentist has an office here in, in New York, right? Only they got thrown out of their offices because the people who own the building are trying decided to turn it into condos. Mm. That's what's happening here in here. So they, they are not going to be able to move into their new digs here in Manhattan until uh, about two or three weeks from now. So what happened to me is I had this crown back here, and it suddenly it fell apart. And I'm sitting there with half a, half a crown or whatever. So I call them up and I say, what, what can, uh, I need to see the dentist. And they told me all about this thing about them getting thrown out and they're not going to be open for two weeks. And they'd call me when they could see me, okay, again. I said, okay, I'll live with this because it wasn't hurting or anything. So now we get a call the next day and it's from our dentist. And she says, <laughs> you, Marjorie needs to get her teeth cleaned and you need to get your tooth taken care of. I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll pick you up and drive you to Scarsdale. No way. <laughs> yeah, so my dentist picked us up and drove us to Scarsdale. Where we Who had says you're not a VIP, man? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> where we had a wonderful afternoon of dentistry. <laughs> uh, they drove us home. Huh? They drove us home. And they drove us home. What? And by the way, I have to see them in another two weeks to get the rest of this crown done. And uh, they're coming down to pick us up and take me up there again. How's that for service from your dentist? Okay. That's awesome. Yeah. So what, what is Scarsdale like? I have never been there. We don't know either. We just saw a dentist's office. <laughs> but we did see the surrounding territory. It's very nice. It's the country. Yeah. You know, it's trees and it's fresh and the air doesn't smell bad. It's you the know. suburbs. It's the suburbs. <laughs> 
Yeah. Where we, we are in towny we, suburbs. Well, we, we, we oh. agreed that if we didn't have the, what'd you say? Tony, very, very upgrade. Uh, uh, that's what my, my impression. I thought, is I thought you meant Tony who calls the show. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot who I was talking to. No, yeah. <laughs> no, it, it, it's don't rude. even think about it, Tony. Yeah. Marjorie, and we, Marjorie and I would have done it. Okay. Uh, we'd move up there. If it weren't that we just had this deal on a rent here, that's impossible to be the equal of anywhere else. So, uh, we, we can't get out of Manhattan. So anyway, so where, where are you, uh, Chris? Well, I'll tell you, Alex, I am in Calabasas at the Rondell smart park at the Cambria hotel. Brand new hotel built about two years ago. The, one of the reasons thing I wanted to show you up here is this. If you can look in the background and see how steep those mountains are back there, do you see them yeah, coming yeah. in at 45 degree angles? Yeah. On the other side of that is where Kobe Bryant, that faithful morning, his uh, helicopter flying through, you know, a couple hundred or a hundred miles an hour or so, um, ran into one of those hillsides on the other Ooh. side of it there. Ooh. That was a really foggy morning. We all had a really bad feeling about that morning anyways, but you can see how steep these are. And yeah. um, and that and this happens to be there. But and and so anyways, that's kind of gives you a picture of nobody should have been flying a helicopter that morning. So I hope he, lessons were learned. And that's a very sad moment. He is memorialized, by the way, there's a there's a sport academy in Thousand Oaks, a few exits up the road where they um, allow young people to kind of develop their talents and everything from volleyball to basketball and so forth there, too. So that's kind of what's going on. So we're in. Kind of the the heart of Calabasas here. Um, now, I promised your uh, your your spouse um, not to talk about electric cars, but I promised not to accept except for a little bit. Wait a minute, wait a minute. That, hold on, she's falling asleep. Okay. That's okay because Lavazoline. listen, people in lockdown Lavazoline. in Harlem. Listen, people in lockdown in Harlem may not think electric cars are interesting, but there are millions of us doing it here. This oh, also happens nice. to be. The, the smart park, here's a couple of cars getting charged up on the 350 watt super machines over here. Here's my car and another gentleman's car being charged up on the um, so in other on words, the 100, it, the 100 watt machines. In we'll other be words, sitting here for at least an hour. Yeah, well, well, I, our thumbs. well I just enjoy sitting there for an hour. And, uh, <laughs> well, what better way to kill time than to watch your than, than to watch your your show? Do, can you check and see what percentage of charge you have in your car at yeah, any given for the time? moment? Yeah, yeah, it is. Um, okay, the every moment, now and then we'll check back with you and see how much. <laughs> <you're talking about. laughs> right now, I'm, I've gone to eighty one percent, which is not a bad deal on this one here too. This is a hotel. Believe me, you're in California. If you want to build anything, you got to pull teeth. You got to fight. You got to grease the palms of city council members. You got to talk about how green you are. So <laughs> their condition of putting this hotel up in a, in the city council meeting about five years ago was to have this electric car park here. It's one of the few at this moment where all of them are working because most of the time these quick chargers, thirty percent of them at any given time, are not working. This is why we love and we hate electric cars. Yeah. all at the same time here too well, let me um, bring, so okay let me i want to bring somebody else in here as you bet you, know, you bet you know, alex i wanted to compliment marjorie she's got the best trump in court uh impression i've ever seen fall asleep <laughs> like that. <laughs> you're muted uh, you're muted marjorie <laughs> the best what the best trump in court falling asleep impression oh. i've ever seen <laughs> <laughs> you, do you actually master we just got to paint you orange yeah yeah <laughs> hello to uh, albert hey albert hello everyone how you hey, doing albert. what's happening oh, well. what's happening down there in florida anything nothing i i just wanted to say hello to everybody i have nothing to add it's not a zoom bomb which i hear is a crime whatever that is <laughs> <laughs> but i have nothing to add well that's when they ring up and then they put on porno on the screen while I'm trying to do a show. Oh, is that a thing? What time will that be? Yeah. What time will that happen? <laughs> <laughs> Count me in. <laughs> so, Alex, you're, what you're saying is you're hosting a variety show. Uh, yeah, basically. Mm -hmm. I just do like the guy on CNN and I just masturbate. I don't put. <laughs> 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 
Jesus. Jesus. <laughs> Tobin. Not in front of us, though, right? Yeah. No, no. no. Was that Jeff Tobin? Albert, Albert, Albert Tobin. 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 Well, what did Tobin no, no. do? I can't remember now. What did Tobin do exactly? He had his didn't have his pants on. He was playing with himself during a meeting in the cave. He didn't realize yeah. his camera was still on. Oh. Who did that? He was, he was, he was, he was manipulating the data. <laughs> Whacking the carrot. I I I just uh, I know I'm doing this now. I would never. I mean, you know, do something like that. Oh, it's, I mean, are you I mean, nobody on the other end has been pretty enough. No. <laughs> show your hands. Show your hands. Oh boy, for their insight. Doing uh, anything exciting in Florida, or isn't there anything exciting to do in Florida? No, I was hoping I'd get picked for the jury, but now that's off. So nothing. Could you have been picked for that jury? Yes, that's my that's my uh my location to be picked for a jury. Oh really? Yeah. Oh well, I don't think they picked the jury yet, have they? No, they the court the trial isn't gonna start now. So oh, no yeah. for the jury. So you're where exactly? Oh, oh. I'm on the Treasure Coast, and and uh, Fort Pierce is is one of the uh, courts that I am responsible for. Oh, that you're responsible for to, to to go to to be a jury. You remember when I when I went to go for jury duty? Yeah, you were hanging out with Soderberg. Yeah, even Soderberg, who ac accused me of trying to get out of jury duty <laughs> after he was trying to get out of jury duty. Mm -hmm. I just got called again for, for jury duty. And here, if you've done jury duty in the last two years, you, you, you don't have to do jury duty again. And I was three days shy of having to do jury duty. It was, you know, three, I was, if, three days if the, but in other words, you, week, you, I would have had to. Oh, you don't have to now. No, here is in the notice. <laughs> oh, I thought it was the other way. I, I looked at it, and the date was three three days different. They're just like sitting on their haunches waiting to get you, aren't they? Yeah, everybody wants me on their jury. See, I didn't mind jury going to jury duty. It was just it's so boring. <laughs> you know, you go into this room, and you just sit there. It's like your cattle in a pen, and they're waiting to slaughter one of you. You know, and then they call you in for jury duty. And uh, I just I got out of it just by saying that I... It was a drug trial, and I said I didn't think I could, uh, you know, kind of judge somebody who had sold drugs. Uh, well, that's we, the boring we, is why they want to bring people like Stormy Daniels in to make things a little more exciting. Yeah, yeah. Well, that but then, then, then you'd be in this the uh, quandary of of uh, Tobin. Uh, while... <laughs> I was I was setting that up for you, Alex. I yeah. wanted you to go there. Go ahead. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, and and John, what have you been doing? Well, I feel like a bore. Uh, you know, we've got two. Well, you live in Novato. That is about as boring as it gets. I know, but a half hour to San Francisco too, though. Um, yeah. But we like it over here and spend time walking on the San Pablo Bay uh, trails. So it's mm -hmm. kind of snore, but we're happy. Novato is the riverside of Marin County, basically. Kind of. You know, yeah, the only not the only not exciting city in Marin County. Yeah, well, it it, it I lived in uh, San Anselmo, which is George it, Lucas. Yeah, George Lucas lived there. Yeah. Well, he no, he doesn't live there anymore. He up on Lucas Valley Road is where Lu, uh, the Skywalker Ranch <laughs> yeah, is. Yeah, I'm not that, sure whether that is in whether that's in San Anselmo or not. He lived in. Here's what he lived in San Anselmo on Hill. <laughs> And that's where he wrote uh, Star Wars and where he uh, did a lot of his, a lot of the post-production was done there. The scene where uh, uh, the, 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 he would get, brings the, 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 the uh, spaceship out of the water or whatever he does there. The starfighter, the fighter, uh, brings it out of the water for Luke. <laughs> they did that at um, the, in San Jose, <laughs> believe it or not, in his basement. <laughs> um yeah and uh then but uh basically most of the picture was done uh then then he moved to skywalker ranch which was up, up on lucas valley road which was not named after him it had always been lucas valley road when i was right. a kid i drank lucas valley milk 
uh, which was a brand. Uh, mm -hmm. And he basically found a place called Lucas Valley Road. And he said, oh, here, off of Lucas Valley Road. We'll do it right, right here. Right. And that's where he built it. Very, It's a very nice place. Just wonderful. Just wonderful. And uh, it's strange. He has a, if this, I hope this is not as boring as, as it's, uh, it's great as electric engines, but uh, he, <laughs> I was told when I was there having lunch one day that they created this whole story surrounding the ranch and that it was built by a sailor who came home from the sea and he built it for his sons who all took over parts of the ranch. And in one place they had a, they had a, a what looked like a stable, which was really the archives. Then they had another thing, which was a vineyard, which was actually Lucas uh, uh, Skywalker Sound. Mm -hmm. And then he had this big, beautiful Victorian that was the uh, was the home that the sale of the, of the, the 3D called. modeling computer generated mm -hmm. programming center. No, that's not what it was. Okay. <laughs> no. no, that was just uh, the business part of the company and i think that's where where lucas actually lived at that time so you know oh here comes brian neary you know what we've actually hit an all-time high i was gonna say it's gotta be a record it's gotta be a record this is how many people now 17 17, 17 people <laughs> wow. wow wow geez we need mandy we need mandy to get 18 come where on where is mandy Mandy's not even here <laughs> where is mandy Wait a I have no idea. Why do you keep asking me? Jeez. <laughs> oh, Mandy. Oh, you're, Mandy. You're, you're sideways. You're sideways. There you are. There we Yeah, are. but no, that's, that's not right. Hey, okay. Now, you're driving what car today? <clears throat> my car I drive every day, my Cadillac. Yeah, the Cadillac. You don't drive the McLaren much, do you? Uh, not lately. Nah. On the weekends. On the weekends. Yes, the weekends I do. Yeah. But did you say your daughter doesn't like you taking her to school in the McLaren? No, she loves it. The other two don't. Well, the other two. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, the other two are shy. Okay, there we go. Where are you parked? Where are you parked at the moment? Just general, uh, generally. Oh, I'm in, I'm in Lodi, California. I'm about to get on the freeway and go down to Lathrop, California. Lathrop? Ooh. Yeah. Lathrop. Yeah. Lathrop. 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 I never, I you know, know, somebody, no, no. every now and then, River, every now and then, River Islands is nice. every now and then people come up with names of places in California and I never heard of them. Biblical I lived names. in California all, most of my life. Now, Lathrop, California, I never heard of. Mm, it's it's between, as well. Stockton, between Stockton and Tracy. Yeah. Okay. Oh, between it, Stockton. It's not a. It's not really a noteworthy, bustling metropolis, by the it's way. It's the scenic yeah. gateway to Manteca, <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> yeah, but but there, there's an area, there's a new area called River Islands, and it's really, really beautiful. It's their own community, and da 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 da. da. So yeah, that's where I'm going right now. Wow. Manteca, a town named after lard, literally in Spanish. Go on, lard. Manteca means lard. That's what it means. Wow. Not a lot of slim gyms down there. Not a lot of slender now, of people course, there. We have Scott Boddicker. Except he, the farm workers. We have Scott Boddicker. He's out there in Texas. Uh, hi, Scott. Hey, Alex. Hey, everybody. Yeah. How's everything in Texas? Just beautiful. Beautiful weather. Calm. Nice. Getting range. Everything's green. Yeah. It'll it'll dry up soon. Any other rights that they've taken away from you? In, uh, uh, <laughs> I, I, I can't get an abortion anymore. I can't. <laughs> <laughs> and Vernon down there in this bluegrass country of Kentucky. How are you? Well, I'm actually surprised that uh, you've heard me talk before about the national popular vote interstate compact. Yeah. My state is actually considering adopting that law. Explain that to people here. It's it's really quite it's probably the answer to a lot of our problems. Explain it. Well, as most people know, the electoral college is established by constitution. So the electoral college cannot go away without a constitutional amendment. But Jamie Raskin, the guy who led the first impeachment, came up with a brilliant idea, which is 
every state by the constitution can decide how their electors to the electoral college uh, will vote. In every state except for two, it's winner take all. So if Donald Trump wins the most votes in Kentucky, all the electoral votes in Kentucky right. will go to Donald Trump. But with Jamie Raskin's bill, every state, or not every state, but I think 16 states in the District of Columbia have adopted the National Popular Vote Interstate Compact, which says when 270 electoral votes come into play, which means there are enough states who have adopted this where 270 electoral votes are coming into play, it kicks in. Until then, the old laws prevail. Now, what, what you say kicks What's in? What's it called? What's it called? National Popular Vote Interstate Compact. Now, but and what happens now? If what happens is, if, yeah. if, if, if uh, like in 2016, Hillary Clinton won the popular vote nationally, if that was in effect, Kentucky would have given all their electoral votes to Hillary Clinton instead of Donald Trump. So in other words, what this does is it, uh, it, it allows the, the national popular vote to prevail. Yes. Yeah. Uh, it overrides it, it overrides legally it overrides the electoral college or makes it moot because the states say okay whoever wins the popular vote we're going to put electors to the electoral college to vote for that person who got the most popular vote nationally mm -hmm. sounds like a good idea to me and that's without that's without a constitutional amendment which will yeah. will never happen in this environment wow Jamie right Raskin. Now with, right Jamie now there Raskin. are two. Right. Yeah, there's 209 votes right now. If you if you count all the states out of 270, there are 209 electoral votes in play right now. And Kentucky only has eight, but still, eight. eight well, I, mean, well I, I, I I've always felt bad about that. I've always complained about that because <clears throat> uh, I hear in New York. I'm not compelled to vote for Joe, uh, uh, Joe Biden, and I'm a little mad at him because of his stance about Israel and so on. Uh, not uh, not uh, the taking away of the stuff which he's done this week, the taking away of the weapons, but basically the way he's handled the whole Gaza situation from the get-go. But I told Marjorie, I said, I don't have to vote for him. I said, because this state is going to go for the the Democrat anyway. So whether I vote or not doesn't really matter much uh, and because it all gets boiled down to electoral votes. And I kind of feel like my vote doesn't really count. You know, I mean, everybody goes to vote and they think, oh, my vote counts. But your vote gets boiled down to, you know, whoever dominates in that particular state into a bunch of electoral votes. And uh, I've just always felt that was wrong. I always thought it should be by the popular vote, period. You know, the, you won the most people, you won. The thing that to me is the most interesting is that if this actually goes into effect and there are enough electoral votes in play with the NPVIC, the point of battleground states disappears. It was away. Yeah. Yes, uh, uh, Mike Chisholm from Canada, where they don't really give a crap about this. But go ahead. <laughs> That's right. Question from a from a uh, you know a, a kind but ignorant Canadian. Doesn't um, doesn't the Electoral College though ensure that some of the states that have less population still be contended and cared about and that sort of a thing wouldn't it yes, it, wouldn't yes. It, yes. in a way yes in a way that, yes that's why that's why that's we'll, we'll never get it done by amendment because uh, the, the 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 smaller states the less popular states will stand against it yeah, but they're, they're well, represented the smaller with smaller states have more power than the bigger mike, states mike consider this one thing okay there are 15 states in the midwest of the united states okay that have less population than the state of California and left yet they control 30% of the Senate. Yeah. I see. That gives us that's the way it's supposed to be though. That's what no, the Senate was designed to do. I know that's what the Senate was designed it was designed to give two people to each state to represent yeah, each state you know, fairly. The small states that ratified the constitution said hey we don't want to be shut down by large population states. Well the least you can possibly so, have is three. 
electoral votes, two for yeah. the two senators and one for if you have one congressional district. Yeah. And, you know, by the way, the Nebraska and Maine have they have electors divided up by congressional district. So Nebraska right. has about five electors. But the one elector that is around University of Nebraska is a very liberal eye inside a very red Republican state. And the Democrats pour a lot of money into that little district to make sure they get that one elector from Nebraska that they can get on their side um, in and to make that vote. The Republicans are now having a special session of the legislature to turn Nebraska into a winner take all to, so that they won't see that district to the democrats and maine has a similar situation right now too by the way yeah but i mean if you go to a state and they never say hey you know uh so and so won 40 percent of the votes in the state and so and so won 60 percent and they don't just divvy them up only only in nebraska and maine apparently yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. But I mean, I just think that I, I just think that it should be popular vote, and that's it. Forget a, about the electoral college. Who needed it anyway in the first place? The reason well, it, existed, it was a compromise. No, it was a reason, compromise when it came the, into existence. It was a compromise because the smaller colonies, like Chris was saying, the smaller colonies had this fear that the bigger colonies were going to just make all the rules and that they they wouldn't have no say. That's the reason the electoral college came into play in the first place. However, as the country has grown, you have a place like Montana that has less population than a state of Maine or anywhere else. And you have mm -hmm. two Dakotas when there should be only one state of Dakota. Yeah. And each of those have two senators. That's bullshit. Yeah. 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 Well, I just think but, it be by pop by popular vote and leave it at that, you know? Well, that remember a, that, I, I, that, that the split yeah. prevented oh, slavery in the North, by the way. Some of us were alive during these times, by the way, when these issues were already being discussed. Why didn't you speak up back then, folks? <laughs> yeah, well, you it know. It was a compromise to get the Constitution adopted. That's what it was. Yeah, well, mm -hmm. also, I mean, I think that, uh, that uh, the reason for the uh, uh, Electoral College was that when people voted, they really didn't know who won overnight in the old days. Right. They didn't have that kind of uh, communication. Mm -hmm. So what they did is everybody got on a horse and, you know, rode to uh, Washington, D.C. And on a certain date in, in January, they all voted. December 14th. Yeah. December 14th. Yeah. And they, and, and they gave them, you know, uh, they did, uh, they, they gave them what their, their state gave them. And that that was the way they did it, rather than they they had no other way of knowing who voted for who in what state until that happened. In fact, I don't think they knew until January who the winner was. You know, it was just it, actually inauguration used to take place in March. Oh, right. right. They had to take that long. Yeah, yeah they took that long. Yeah. yeah. So Vernon, hey. What, uh, would you? Uh, what's happening now in terms of of uh, people coming onto this? You you mentioned it. Could you re, re, could you say that again? Right now, there are two hundred and nine electoral votes in play because the states have adopted it. There are nineteen states plus the District of Columbia that have passed NPVIC. It is a law that actually does not trigger until 270 electoral votes are in play. Right now, there's only 209. <laughs> so how so? How fast do they think they can get the rest of these? It, it, it really doesn't matter. The one, the one state that I, I actually wrote an email to the governor because he's a Democrat. And I said, why are you not pushing for NPVIC in Pennsylvania? That's 16 electoral votes. Here's here's it. Well, here's the question. I mean, it, 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 who gets to vote in each of these individual states on whether they go to this system? Is it the, the it's the legislatures, legislature. the state legislatures? Yeah, this is not a ballot because no, because the Constitution specifically says each state legislature decides how they will pick their candidates for the electoral college. Okay, all right. And what do you think of this so, system, Albert? I really haven't given it much thought. <laughs> As I said, today I have not much to offer. No, that's okay. That's okay. Yes, you do. You have uh, your 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 presence. 
You know, I, really I'm, outspo exactly. I'm outspoken when I want to be, but I just don't have it in me today. I, and especially not about politics. I just. I, hey, speaking of that, you two, did you two ever have Sanborn on the show? Did you ever have David Sanborn on the show? Why would I? Oh, back in the day. I just thought maybe you did back in the day. He was in New York. I wasn't here. I, I was in San Francisco. Oh, I, yeah. And you were you were in New York for a time, too, I thought. It'd been a long time ago. Anyway, Sanborn passed today. Did he really? Yeah, I was wondering why. You know, I found out died. So did uh, Corman, the director? Yeah. Roger Corman. I wrote about Roger what? Corman. What? Corman went today? Yeah. No, not yeah, today. Last problem. week, I think. Yeah, it was oh. it, his. He got shocked by his electric car. <laughs> <laughs> I um um okay, I, Grandpa. I was quite I, I was quite depressed. I found out uh, when I was watching uh, I was watching the BAFTA TV Awards, and they did their memorial in memoriam. And I love watching their in memoriam because, for the most part, I never heard of any of those people because <laughs> they're all British, right? And then all of a sudden, on comes a name. Um, uh, uh, Carl Davis. Now I don't know how anybody wow. here Carl Davis is? No. Okay. Jazz Carl, musician? No, no. Uh he was a uh a, I closest thing I could say is a classical musician. Marjorie and I saw him both uh, conduct a symphony orchestra when we went to see Napoleon yeah. Shecky in California. Uh he was a guy who specialty <clears throat> was to do music for silent films and he was brilliant i mean he oh. made uh, he made silent films live and i loved his work and who uh, other person loved his work was shecky and shecky became close friends with him towards the end of shecky's life and to have uh, a carl davis die was just a real shocker for me you know although he was like in his late 80s so, I mean, it's to be expected, but I was just, I didn't even hear that he had died. So, you know, and it was just in the last couple of weeks. So anyway, that was my big uh, thing. Yeah, meanwhile, thanks. So, for, uh, hmm? for, I appreciate that, uh, that uh, what you told us about, about the, the electoral college and stuff. And um, that's, that was pretty interesting and I'm going to make use of it. Thank you. Yeah. Well, the electoral Alex, um, yeah, there was something fun kind of happened in California this weekend, and that was the Cruel World Music Festival in and around Pasadena a Rose Bowl, and yep. it's and and they 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 claimed attendance of a hundred thousand people, and it was it was basically bands that were played on Alex's radio station, The Quake and Live One Hundred Five. Um, headliners were um, Duran Duran and Blondie, and then some of the more um, some of the more dark '80s bands, um, Ministry and um, the Stranglers, and some other things. And I wanted to, and this and this swerves into something I wanted to ask Alec about because Alex, you were let's say, well, let me just put it this way: if you were around New York and you were over in the Bowery. Um, um, around 1974, 75, you would have stumbled into CBGBs and seen Blondie, Talking Heads, and the Ramones, um, television, and those bands. And I was just wondering if you ever touched into that world and touched those people because you were still in New York at that time, right? Yes, but I never went over to CBGBs. Uh, but it, well, I, it was kind of a shithole. It's a good thing you didn't, probably. Yeah, I did get to but know. I did kind of a shithole. <laughs> so that's an understatement it was a, you guys were probably all in the mosh pit over there right it was a shithole by design right. uh, uh, but i did know a lot of the bands which was what was so strange i mean i became very close to the with the ramones uh and uh i was close to uh, uh what's her name uh, uh, uh deborah harry no not deborah harry Patty. huh um, Patty Smith. No, not Patty Smith. Patty Smith. Oh God. Um, what was her name now? Joan Jay. Mrs. Ramon. Mrs. Ramon, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway, she was uh she was the lead singer in a band and she used to, you know, blow up things in her with her group. Wendy Williams. Wendy Williams. Oh, Patty Smith, not Patty Smith. Then, oh, no. Wendy, Wendy Williams. Yeah. Oh, Wendy, okay. Plasmatic? Oh, Wendy, okay. Wendy okay. O. Wendy O. Williams. Wendy O. Williams, right. By the way, here to really add to our numbers, 
Okay. What have we got now? Uh, Charlene. Charlene. Was she, yeah, she, well, I don't know. Just huh? coming back to 17. We were at, it, she dropped off. Back. What? We need a newbie for 18. You still, this is just 17, right? Yeah. This is 17. Who left? Me, but I came back. Oh, but you came so back. Oh, okay. All right. We missed, can... we missed you. We missed you. We don't oh. see you, though. Oh, yeah, sweet. No. <clears throat> I messaged Nobody John Miller to see him pop on, but he wouldn't do it. Yeah. There we go. Yeah. There we go. There she is. Uh, yeah. So anyway, um, uh, Wendy Williams, uh, I became very close to. Uh, amazing. I can't remember her name. That's how close I was to her. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> Actually, a very beautiful woman, even though she was extremely punk. Well, the only time that I was uh, I was um, at CBGB's was for her memorial. And I spoke at the memorial. Uh, but, wow. Uh, at, at the request of her husband. Uh, and it, it was, uh, you know, she was she was a wonderful person. She was just the sweetest. She always played this woman, you know, blowing up cars and with a, a, a what do you call it, an electric uh, saw and chopping things, the chainsaw, and chainsaws, and you know, burning things and blowing them up and so on, and almost not wearing any clothing at all. And then, if you met her personally, she was just so demure and sweet and kind and just this wonderful person. And I just I absolutely adored her. Absolutely adored her. But uh, that's the only time I ever got to CBGB's was when I spoke there. You know, I never. And the Ramones. Uh, can you tell us a little? I, I've actually in one of their music videos had a chance to meet them. All very professional and reserved. But maybe you could tell us about some of the Ramones stories or or some of your encounters with the Ramones. Well, it, it, my my main encounter with the Ramones was they would come to San Francisco, and Joey, who got to really like me, would like I'd come I'd come in in the morning at six o'clock, and Joey would be sleeping on the couch <laughs> waiting for me to come in to do do the show, and I, he wasn't even scheduled to be on the show. Uh, and uh, he was really, really terrific. Uh, you know, uh, he was just a, a sweet guy too. You know. Boy, we got 18 people now. My <laughs> God. I feel like this is a gangbang here. <laughs> yeah. But no, but he was really terrific. And they used to always, when I would go to see their concerts in San Francisco, they would always dedicate a song to me. And uh, they always considered me kind of the fifth Ramon, kind of like the fifth <laughs> people. And, and I, it just, I just, I, I, they were all terrific. And especially Joey, who was just a delight. And funny. Even though you were only the ninth Beatle, you you were the I, fifth I was, I was Ramon. The ninth that's Beatle. awesome. Yeah, no. You got stepped on by the Beatles, by the way. Never forget that. Yeah, I got stepped on by Ringo. Right, that's right. He that's something. On, he stepped on my hand. There were people there. My sister <laughs> would have killed to be stepped on by Ringo. Yeah. Well, it was where they were playing it in in uh, Houston, and I, our station was sponsoring the concert and i was standing backstage and my hand was on the stairs coming off the stage and when they ran off the stage after their very last number because they would always run to get into an armored car to take them to their hotel uh, uh uh ringo stepped on my hand and years later i reminded him of that and he apologized so i i figured i did okay and if were it not for the statute of limitations you'd probably be a multi-millionaire in that lawsuit yeah right exactly, exactly. it was a simpler time although the, the beatles had quite a bit more money than i did for legal actions you know, so. but anyway well, hello there kevin you know you've really added to our crowd here yeah, it looks uh, pretty crowded here alex yeah yeah you don't see this all very often at night do you no, no, These people usually love don't get show. on during the day, but I just remembered you were they on here last few minutes. show because it's like spending an afternoon with friends, right, Len? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and Andrew? Uh, indubitably here. <laughs> Marjorie? Of course. <laughs> I usually realize you're on about five minutes before you go off. <laughs> <laughs> oh crap he's on oh no he's off <laughs> um that's the best part yeah um Ke kevin what have you been up to anything interesting 
No, not really. Well, okay. Doing my checkbook. <laughs> if that's interesting to you, not really. You you what? Doing my checkbook. Oh, you're balancing your checkbook. Does, do we will balance it? People still do that, huh? Of course. <laughs> yeah, I've got to. Doesn't the bank do that for you now? I mean, I get every month. No. I, I, well, no, but I can go over to my my uh, checking account, and I can just reconcile it right there. You don't reconcile. Yeah. You look at it. Yeah. <laughs> I don't look at it. I just spend it. Okay. But that's not reconciling. <laughs> and I have not had. Have, I don't have I, enough I, money not to worry about you, it. You've reconciled with the fact there's no money in there. <laughs> Wait a minute. The question would be: uh, How many of you have had a check? bounce in the last five years a check no. that's why i, I reconcile it you mean my unintentionally so that won't take a question how many people admit to it i i uh i haven't actually had a check bounce in god i can't remember when i had a check was the last time any of you wrote a check i was I just gonna say that, that. Right. absolutely yeah. Yeah. I yeah, exactly <laughs> I got to tell you, unless you go to my my apartment owners mm -hmm. here, the landlords, and ask for it, they actually want you to send them a check. That's crazy. And I'm going, who sends checks anymore? I do. D really? I do. Yeah. I do. My water bill, a couple of my bills, I still write checks. No. Wow. <laughs> Automatic debit. Uh -oh. <laughs> Well, but can't it gives you me something to do. Gives me something to do when I'm on the show on Alex's at night. Yeah. <laughs> Don't give up our secrets, Brian. <laughs> no, but I'm, uh, I. Sorry, Kevin. I can't remember the last time. I, when did we? We had to write a check a couple of weeks ago, didn't we, Marjorie? For something. Something. Somebody asked, somebody asked for a check, and something. We, we said to them, "Does anybody use checks anymore?" Best use is when you're getting work done by somebody at your house. You say, if I pay with a credit card, it's one. How about you give me 4% off and I'll write you a check and you don't have to pay the credit card fees. I'll just give them cash. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Asking. I pay all my umpires with a check. Every wow. two weeks. Well, <laughs> but, but you're, you're kind of, in a way, running a business there. And you yeah. probably I have to have checks. checks. I do. Well, no, have checks so you have a a a a trail to the money. Exactly. If ever a question about it? Donald well, Trump you writes you checks. Learned anything from Trump and Cohen? <laughs> yeah. Right. Oh, you're right. He, he's That's he's got his trail. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They're all checking his account today. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, and, and it's good that we are. <laughs> yeah, but what was bouncing wasn't his check. Oh, <laughs> it's been that kind of week. Have you, have, uh, have, have all of you been following that? I mean, we're, we don't normally talk about politics, and this isn't politics. This oh. is crime we're talking about. <laughs> Law and order. <laughs> um, Cone's doing great today. Really? Yeah. yeah. Calm well, and collected and, and sharing indisputable recordings and everything else. Yeah. I was looking at it earlier. It seems like he's doing a really good job. Trump put out a, a, a freaking post about this may be my last uh, tweet before I go to prison or something like that. Please send me money. He, he wants to go to prison. How much he needs. I think to. I'll write a check. He did. He wants to go to prison. <laughs> I, think, I think he wants to go to jail. I think he, he, does. Does. he wants he to take a page out of the Hitler songbook. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You yeah. he heard there's high iron content in the water and he'll be orange all the time. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, boy. Uh, it's a bookkeeping issue. And uh, I don't know why Stormy Daniels is there, but you know what? If someone isn't bookkeeping right, they should go right to jail. And, um, and, um, uh, the thing is, though, it is Mark Garrigo says that it's usually in this case, when it's a criminal trial, trial someone's found guilty. They're reprimanded to jail right on the spot, which means yeah. the cuffs are put on and they're walked right through. They, they will uh, not do that with him. They're not going to perk walk. They're not going to perk walk. They're going to get have George to get Mass. past secret They need service. to build an oval shaped cell first. You know, so it takes a while. <laughs> <laughs> secret service isn't going to prevent him from getting uh, arrested, are they? Oh, I don't think so because if he's sitting there, if he's in the courtroom, I don't think they can they can stand between here, here, him and the, the sheriffs in the courtroom. If, if he goes to jail, 
do the Secret Service people have yes, to go with Yes, yes, they don't go in the cell. They, they, they can, probably stand outside the what cell. About, what, about about <laughs> what about his hairdresser? What about his hairdresser? What about his wig master? <laughs> they'll give him an ankle <laughs> when he starts. Nobody so knows. Nobody knows because this never happened before. Nobody knows anything about what's yeah, going on. This happen. is all. This is all virgin territory. That's right. The head of the, the virgin the head territory. Of the, yeah. The head of the January sixth committee, Bernie Thompson, has introduced a bill in Congress that if Trump is convicted, they will withdraw his Secret Service protection. Yeah. Nice. Wait, wait, a, wait a minute. Wait a minute. If he ever needed it, it would be in prison. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know. I think they'll do a, a anklet bracelet. <laughs> yeah. bracelet yeah a little bubba protection gold a gold <laughs> anklet bracelet nice yeah uh, there's a there's a video of tommy tupper tupper douche talking about how <laughs> how the the about how how the the court is so depressing and it, i don't think the guy even knows how people on criminal trials go to court of course it's depressing it's boring yeah. it's, it's court it's he, he's acting like somehow they've they've made the court awful, horrible just just to get him. It, bring, on, bring on the dancing so preposterous. Girl. Yeah. <laughs> if if anything, court is very boring. Yeah. You know. What's interesting is that the prosecutor in this case has done all the boring stuff up front to corroborate what Michael Cohen is telling them today. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's, they're they're brilliantly doing their job. There's no. Yes. But the interesting I would, one I would also, love to, I would love to be there only because he's farting a lot, they say. <laughs> today you want to be was, right behind him, Alex? <laughs> they said today he was absolutely you know, when we sound, say that sound asleep. When we say that Alex Bennett is a that 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 uh Howard Stern was a cheap imitation of Alex Bennett and uh, Alex Bennett starts talking about farting, I know they're right. Thank you. That's I all. appreciate that. Uh, he stole but Alex the invented the fart. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. Uh, I'm sure somebody on this call did. Well, that was no, after but, he invented but, the internet, right? But, you know, I mean... He may uh, have. He may have. This guy supposedly passes a lot of gas in court. Yeah. And, uh, nice. uh, you know, I mean, he's... Because uh, he drinks too much Diet Coke. What'd you say? Hey, don't you talk about Diet Coke that way, young lady. You're Coke, Coke Zero. That's my, that's my fix. Yeah. What, what were you saying? Uh, what were you saying about Coke? That that he drinks Diet Coke all day long. Yeah. 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 Which is don't we all? I don't anymore. I I use uh, what is it? What what do I do? Oh, here it is. Here we go. I'm not going to do my commercial. There we go. Nice. Ice, rather. Um, it's, it's a oh. seltzer, and it's a flavored seltzer that tastes very good. So my daughter liked that. Really, it's terrific, and uh, it's better for you than Coke. That's for damn sure, because basically it's seltzer with a little flavoring in it. You know, although I noticed that the top on one of the flavors right up here, the top up here, it gets sludgy from the from whatever this color. That's what it did. The no, it's not this color. It landed no, no. on the bottle. I can actually take my finger and wipe it off. Oh, it's white, you know. What brand? What brand <laughs> seltzer is that you're drinking, Alex? Ice, ice. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah, yeah. It's pretty cool. It's pretty. I, cool. I'm hoping you're going to get drum up some sponsorship here. Yeah, well, I'm. I'm. I, I hope that I do too. <laughs> so, what do you charge? How much are you charged now? Your car. How, 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 how? Oh, okay. You know what? I just, I got, what happens with the EVgo is they only give you an hour. So I'm a little over 80%. They say you're not supposed to charge more than 80% or you burden the battery, but I like to get up to a hundred or so. Um, so I'm just doubling up a little bit and that's, so. See, this um, is I'll why I would never buy. Okay. Bottom line, this is the end of the discussion. Why I would never buy an electric car is because the amount of time it takes to charge the damn thing. You were there for an hour, and it was so boring. You called us. <laughs> no, cheaper, cheaper than gas. They haul ass, Alex. More power than you can imagine. I understand. They haul ass, wait, wait, and wait. I get more pussy in this car than I ever got in any combustion engine. I beat my friend's Lamborghini on zero to 60 seconds. Only, so you, you, it's only because you're stealing the neighbor's cats. 
And, and what, because I have good hair. Per, no way. I have good hair too. Chris, what Chris, what percentage of that electric that you just put in that car was created by fossil fuels? Well, probably there's probably still a running squirrel on a conveyor belt component, but probably a good percentage. But remember this, It'll, that natural gas clean burns pretty clean, and that's the majority good. of our power supply in California is the natural gas burning. It's, it's but probably it's, most of it. Probably Brian, most of it. Brian, as so you were walking in, hold on a second. Brian, as you were walking in, I saw a swimming pool. Do you have a swimming pool too? <laughs> uh, no. Well, then we're no comment. <laughs> Whose pool no. was that? No comment. <laughs> <laughs> so, Alex, I have a question. I, do you, you know, I, I, uh, I, I, I attended a performance by Evan Sayed about 10 years ago, maybe greater, and I remembered him from your show. And um, do you have room in your meeting for Evan to come on? If I, he's a friend oh, of mine yeah. now, and I've, if I have, do uh, you have a second for him to come on board? Evan who? Sometime. Evan who? Evan Say it. Evan Say it. Do you remember Evan Say it? He used to be on your show all the time. No. <laughs> you don't remember the comedian Evan Say it. Okay. No, I don't. But then You're kidding I, me. I had so. He's a friend of Phil's. Oh, oh, is he? <laughs> he, he was on your show all the time. Well, okay. I don't. That's remember. how I remember meeting him. I don't remember Phil. Okay. So, I don't know who <laughs> Phil is. Phil who? <laughs> yeah. That okay. Just be sure to remember your wife, my friend. You know, Scott stopped calling my night show because he didn't want to have to put up with Phil anymore, right? <laughs> Phil quit calling in. Yeah, but you should start again. Okay. Okay. Yeah, hey, listen, we've run out of time here. We really have. We're, in fact, we're running over now. Boy, this has been nice. Ton of people. Loaded. Mike Chisholm up there in Canada. Good to see you. Mike. Love kids. Yeah, uh, Marjorie over there in my bedroom. <laughs> uh, and of course, uh, Len Lafrisco. He's out in California. Got uh, Charlie w uh, Wallace. He's out in Texas. Andrew Deutsch is out in, you're in Ohio, right, Andrew? That was canceled. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Francine Witt, who is here in uh, New York City. Good to see you again, Francine. <laughs> Jeff Stein. I, I, I'm a pirate. I'm a pirate. <laughs> pirate. Uh, John Ewing, thank you for being here, John. Uh, Paula, always a pleasure. You know that, darling. Uh, Vernon Nunn, the best. Scott Boddicker, the second best. Uh, this is Chris Cat. Thank you for calling. Uh, Albert, you know, why? I, I I told him he's my he's my newest best friend because he's the only one left. <laughs> All the others have died, and I but I didn't want to put that that burden on him. So anyway, thank and, you. and as that that that's reciprocal too. What? <laughs> And you'll be my best friend. Oh, okay. How many of your best friends have died? None of them. Oh, okay. So I got a good chance of surviving for a while. You moved up on uh, just on being a good guy. That's all. Oh, well, thank you, Albert. I appreciate it. And and Brian Neary, my 48th best friend right there. And uh, 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 Charlene Solis. Good to see you again, Charlene. And Kevin, always a delight. Everybody it's time to go, but we have to go. And before we do, where is he? There he is. Like, you're, in, you're in the dark today. Yeah, I know. I'm, I did something to my camera. I have to correct it. Oh, okay. It doesn't matter. You didn't yeah, do anything okay. to your voice, and that's what's important. Okay. Uh, yeah. I'm at 100% well, now. Gentlemen. That's all, folks. <laughs> <laughs> Bye-bye, everybody. Bye, guys. Thanks, Alex.